It's good to be back Amen. at Temple Baptist Church and to Amen. see everyone and to see Miracle Bob. That's we right. prayed for you, Bob, and prayed Amen. for the other, prayed for Edie. Good to see you. Amen. God bless you. Yes. Brother Eccles and all the folks. We... Uh, been traveling around and we're <laughs> yes, excited have. to be back and as brother cliff said you know he doesn't call evangelists but the way we hooked up this time is we had found out that carol's mother had passed away and my wife wanted to send carol a little sympathy card and cuz my wife lost her mother uh, right before covid started and so we know what it's like when you lose lose your mother and so we sent a sympathy card, and Brother Cliff said, thank you for that card. My wife enjoyed it, and uh, it was very nice of you. So we called and offered condolences, got to talking, and believe it or not, I think from now through September, today was the only time that we would have available that we were going to be uh, available in Arizona. And Brother Cliff said, why don't, why don't you come? and?" And we'll have food, and we'll have your wife speak to the ladies, and we'll just have a hoedown. So I'm excited about being here today with you folks. And in praying about what to preach, I uh, know that Temple Baptist Church is a soul-winning church. Of all the pastors I know, and I know a lot of pastors, your pastor is probably in the top five or three that's burden for souls. Do I hear an amen? amen? He loves souls. I love souls. I like to witness to everyone. I like to pass tracks. And he has trained soul winners. And he's not just do as I say, watch me and do it. Amen? And he leads by example. Praise God. So <clears throat> when you think about soul winning, the Bible says, He that winneth souls is wise. Temple Baptist Church is full of a bunch of smart people because <laughs> you folks are soul winners here. But today, I want us to look at a picture of someone in the Bible. How many like types, illustrations, pictures? Um, when you look at something, God has in the Bible many, many descriptions of different things that he uses to describe things. What animal does he describe you and I, the believers, as? What are we? His sheep. Yes. And whether you're a good sheep or you're a bad sheep, you're a sheep. Amen? God has a lot of typology. Do you remember when Moses uh, came in and rescued the children of Israel and from the, under the Egyptians and he was going to take them to the, the promised land? The promised land was a picture of heaven. How many are going to the promised land someday? Yeah. How many want to go there? Yeah, I do too, but after we eat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so there's many pictures in the Bible, typology. And today I want us to look at a picture that maybe you've seen this before, maybe you haven't, but take your Bibles, go to 2 Samuel chapter 9. 2 Samuel chapter 9. 2 Samuel chapter 9. We're going to look at a, a guy whose name was Mephibosheth. That's a, that's a big, big word, four syllables. And this guy, Mephibosheth, he was the son of Jonathan. And Jonathan and David, you remember David the shepherd boy, Psalm 23. You remember David killed Goliath the giant. You remember David became king of Israel. Jonathan was Saul, King Saul, this king before, the king before David was Jonathan. And Jonathan had a son named, can anybody say that with me? Meshibotheth. <laughs> if I say it wrong a couple times. Mephibosheth. And he was the son of Jonathan, this, who was the son of King Saul. So Saul was this guy's grandpa. Okay? I'm just giving you a little, the back story. All right? Saul tried to kill David all the time. He was chasing him. He was jealous. He was going to become king. 
But Jonathan, Saul's son, and David became special friends. Special friends. You know, a friend loveth at all times. And if you have a special friend, you can thank God for that. Amen? Friends are hard to find. You say, oh, I don't have any friends. Well, the Bible says if you show yourself friendly, you'll have friends galore. Have you ever seen how many friends Pastor Lawton has on his Facebook? Was it 4,800? Unbelievable. The guy is friendly. That's why he's such a good soul winner. He has a smile and Jesus radiates. You want friends? Just be friendly. So Jonathan and David were friends. And Jonathan helped David escape from his dad, Saul. And Jonathan and Saul were killed in a battle a little later. But David promised to take care of any survivors from Jonathan's family. He promised that. And once he remembered that, he sent out somebody to find any of the relatives of Jonathan. So we're going to pick it up in 2 Samuel chapter 9, verse 1. Are you ready? David said, is there any that is left of the house of Saul? Because when a new king would take over, and especially when the old king tried to kill the new incoming king, they, they were enemies. Families were enemies. So what did the new king usually do to all the relatives that were left over? <laughs> okay that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake. King David promised Jonathan, I'm going to take care of any of your relatives. Look at verse 2. And there was, yeah, 2 Samuel 9, verse 2. And there was of the house of Saul, a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they had called unto him David, the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is he. And the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul, that I may show the kindness of God unto him? And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan hath yet a son, which is lame on his feet. So he had a cripple. And we'll tell you how this happened in a minute. And the king said unto him, Where is he? And Ziba said to the king, Behold, he's in the house of Maker, the son of Amiel, in Lodabar. Now let's stop here in verse 4 just for a moment. Lodabar was the ghetto. Uh, so I'm not real familiar with Tucson, but tell me one of the worst places in Tucson. Where is it? 36th Street. 36th Street? Somebody else? Downtown. Downtown? Oh, Center. <laughs> Who'd you say? Center. South, Tucson. South Tucson. Okay, where's the best, highest falutin place in Tucson? Foothills. Okay. All right. Where I'm from in, in Mesa... We have Scottsdale. Anybody ever heard of that? Yeah. yeah, that's where the rich people are with their know of this. And they're driving Beamers and they're driving uh, Porsche. And But if you wanted to say Lodabar, Lodabar, hardly nobody had cars. Lodabar was, was, was ghetto. I'm not going to say it's Apache Junction, but I'm just going to say <laughs> that Lodabar is a rough place. I, I mean rough. So this is where the crippled kid of Jonathan is living, and the king says, watch, verse 5. Then the king sent and fetched him out of the house of Mecher, the son of Amiel, from Lodabar. Now when Meshibotheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come to David, he fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Meshibotheth? And he answered, Behold thy servant. And David said unto him, Fear not. Ladies and gentlemen, why would Meshibotheth be afraid to stand before David? Somebody tell me. Because he would be killed because his grandpa, Saul, tried to kill David. Okay? David said, Fear not, for I will show thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake. I will restore thee all the land of Saul thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. Wow! Look at verse 8. And he bowed himself and he said, who am I? What is my servant? What is thy servant that thou should look upon such a dead dog as I am? Yes, he was humble. Yes, he was beaten down. Yes, he was lame on his feet. But the condition this man was in, we're going to show you in a minute. Verse 9. 
Then the king called to Zimba, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I have given unto thy master's son all that pertaineth to Saul and all of his house. Thou therefore and thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him. <laughs> you guys are going to farm it for him. And thou shalt bring in the fruits. Then you're going to harvest whatever you plant. And, and then thy master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, thy master's son, shall eat bread always at my table. Where was Meshibotheth going to sit? At the king's table. If you're saved today, you're going to sit at the king's table. Amen? Watch it. It gets gooder. <laughs> now Zimba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Then said Zimba unto the king, According to all that my lord the king hath commanded his servant, so shall thy servant do. As for Mephibosheth, said the king, he shall eat at my table as one of the king's sons. Are you getting this? Watch verse 12. And Mephibosheth had a young son whose name was Micah, and all that dwelt in the house of Zimba were servants unto Mephibosheth. So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem, for he did eat continually at the king's table and was lame on both feet. Let's pray. Father, help us today to see a beautiful picture of salvation. Help us, Lord, to see your love and mercy and kindness. Help us, Lord, to see your grace. God, today, Lord, we were saved at a load of bar. God, we were all crippled by sin and Today, just speak to our hearts. May we see an illustration, a picture, a type, Lord, of not only the sinner, but the Savior. So speak to our hearts today. We ask this now in Jesus' name and for his sake. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. Just flip over to 2 Samuel 19 for a moment. 2 Samuel 19 and verse 24. 2 Samuel 19, we just want to get a little description of what uh, Mephibosheth looked like when they went to Lodabar to grab him and bring him to the palace. 2 Samuel 19, and let's just go to verse 24. This is when he went to meet the king. They came down, they found him, and in 2 Samuel 19 and verse 24, when you're there, say amen. And Mephibosheth, the son of Saul, came to meet the king, King David now, and had neither dressed his feet. Now, what this means was that he hadn't washed his feet. He hadn't cut his toenails. Some Bible scholars, Bible commentators will tell you that they believe that when it says he had not dressed his feet, that his toenails were long and curled over, almost, almost you're thinking of some uh, like bird claws or something. And he was lame on his feet because when he was five years old, ladies and gentlemen, when he was five years old, the Philistines were supposedly chasing after Saul and the Israel army, and Meshibotheth had a nursemaid. And the nursemaid grabbed up this five-year-old kid and started running, and she tripped and Meshibotheth broke both of his feet. Anybody ever heard that before? Broke his feet. And they didn't get set properly, so his feet got healed. So he was lame on his feet. He was crippled, and he was not able to walk. So basically, Frank, he became an invalid at a very young age. So not only... Was his feet not dressed or cleaned or his toe, toenails cut? Watch this. Neither dressed his feet nor trimmed his beard. So if you had a beard and you never trimmed it, how long would it be? Pretty long. <laughs> nor washed his clothes. Anybody here not washed your clothes for a long time? Thank God you have. Amen. Amen. <laughs> So, from the day the king departed unto the day he came again in peace. Are you getting the picture of what this guy looked like in Lodabar? He was a mess. He was a mess. You say, 
And he's going to bring him to the palace? And he's going to put him at his table to eat? Oh, the story of David's love and kindness towards Jonathan's son, Meshibotheth, and him keeping his promise is a picture, is a picture, Brother Bob, of God's love for us. Amen? In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. What I like about Bible soul winning, Pastor Lawton, is you don't go to the door and say, nah, 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 hi, we're here from Temple Baptist, and if, if you pull yourself up by your bootstraps, if you turn over a new leaf, if you take a shower and trim your toenails, you can go to heaven. <laughs> is that what you tell them? No. no. You say, there's a God in heaven that loves you. There's a God in heaven that will take you at a load of bar and put you at the king's table forever. Amen. You give them hope. You show them God's love. David really didn't care what Meshibotheth looked like, did he? No. He was, concer he was concerned right. about getting him to the palace. And David sent someone to find him. Sent someone to find him. You see, Meshibotheth came to live in the royal palace and stayed there the rest of his life. And then when he died, he went to the mansion that God prepared for him. You see, there's a lot of similarities here between us and Moshebotheth. And I just got a couple of them. One, he was separated from the king. He was separated from the king. The whole family of Moshebotheth, with the single exception of Jonathan, they were the enemies of David. Because Saul, the grandpa, he wanted to kill David because he didn't want to give up the kingdom. But it was God's plan. And you see, Grandpa Saul tried everything possible to kill David. So, Meshemetha being the enemy of David, he was living far from the palace in the town called, somebody tell me, Lord Lodabar. He was far away. So, Meshemetha was separated from the king. You and I are separated from our Father before we were saved. We were far, far. We were at enmity with God. We were enemies of God. You know, ladies and gentlemen, he was separated from the king, and he was separated by a fall. Lodabar to Jerusalem, he was lame on his feet. He was a cripple. He couldn't get there if he tried. Say, so, well, you just get one of them motorized scooters. <laughs> No, he didn't have one of them motorized scooters then. You see, he was separated by a fall. We said when he was five years old, the nurse was running, fleeing from the Philistines, fell and busted his feet. His legs were injured. He was basically an invalid. Ladies and gentlemen, you and I are crippled by a fall as well. Yeah. What was our fall? Yes. We're crippled by sin. sin. Yeah. Adam. In the garden, fell. Eve, in the garden, saw it. They fell. You say, well, Eve was deceived. Yeah, and Adam sinned with his eyes wide open, didn't he? Yeah. So he was separated from the king, and he was separated by a fall. You and I are separated by our fall. The fall reminds us of the fall we've taken in this world. Not a physical fall, but a spiritual fall. And you know, ladies and gentlemen, all have sinned and short. fallen short. Our fall is, we've fallen short. We don't measure up. I would venture to say if, uh, where's Angel? Doesn't he look really athletic? Like he could really run? <laughs> and me, what do I look like? Don't tell, don't tell me. If, if we went to the Grand Canyon, if me and Angel went to the Grand Canyon, Cliff, Pastor Cliff, and we backed up 200 yards, the angel and me, and someone went, go! <laughs> and we jump as far as we can. I get out there a ways, but angel probably gets out there a lot further than me, but we both fall short. <laughs> fall short. So everybody has fallen short. Doesn't matter who you are. 
nobody's so good they don't need to be saved, and nobody's so bad that they can be saved. Amen. And you see, ladies and gentlemen, there's no misdemeanor sins and felony sins. It's all <laughs> sin. Amen? Yeah. So he was separated from the king, and they were separated by a fall. But it was... He was separated by fact. By fact. It isn't just somebody thought he was separated. It was the fact he was in Lodabar and David was in Jerusalem. And he couldn't get there on his own. We're separated from God by our sin. And we can't get to God on our own. All of our righteousness is like a filthy rag. Yeah. You see, he couldn't get there. He couldn't walk there. He couldn't be good enough. He may as well have been on another planet as far as he was separated from King David. We can't get to God by ourselves. But there's somebody that can bring us to the king, and his name is Jesus. Amen? Amen. You see, ladies and gentlemen, he's separated from the king, but number two, he was sought. He was sought by the king. Amen. David had a... Angel, David had a heart of compassion. He had a heart of love. And I often wonder, Pastor Lawton, if this isn't one of the attributes that God contributed to David when the Bible says David was a man after God. God's own heart. Because we know David wasn't a perfect person. He fell into sin with Bathsheba. We know David had his problems but he was full of love and compassion. That's why to be a soul winner, you don't have to be a perfect person. Amen? Okay. It's like one beggar telling another beggar where to find bread. Amen? Amen? You can tell somebody, you can tell anybody about the only one that can save you. He was sought by the king. He sent the servants to find the relative of Jonathan. Is that not a picture of God seeking us, ladies and gentlemen? Amen. The Bible says in Luke, Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. Amen. He'll go to Scottsdale. He'll go to South Tucson. He'll go to Lodabar. He'll go to Mount Lemon. Is that around here? Yeah. Is there expensive homes up there? Yeah. You ever not Mount Lemon? Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing here? I got everything I need. <laughs> ah, you're living in Lodabar and you don't even know it. <laughs> Yeah. Man is deep in his sin. Sometimes he doesn't need... You know, the gospel isn't just for down and outers. The yeah. gospel is for up and outers. Amen? Amen? The gospel is for everyone. Everyone. It's God's will that none should perish, but all come to repentance. God didn't choose some people for hell and some people for heaven. It's his will that none should perish. It's a whosoever will. Amen. How many here are whosoevers? <laughs> yeah. Thank God. He was sought by the king. And this love, it was an open love. He said, go see if there's anyone. I don't care if they're in Lodabar or Scottsdale. Go see if there's anyone who I can grant this kindness to. I have grace to give. It's free, undeserved, unmerited. It's open love. It's open love. Not only was it open love, ladies and gentlemen, it was an overcoming love. What did David have to overcome to send his servants to go bring in the relatives of Saul and Jonathan? What did he have to overcome? The fact that they were his, thank you, enemies. He had to overcome that. You remember what Jesus said, Father, forgive them, yeah. for they what? No, not what they do. Did Jesus have overcoming love? Crucify him! Crucify him! Mm -hmm. Your pastor preached that message on the wounds of Christ. What they did to him. And look how he loved them. Oh, how he loves you and me. Amen. It was an open love. It was an overcoming love. Over Grandpa Saul pulled out the stops trying overcoming. to kill David. Though our sins were laid on Christ and he died for us, he wants to save anyone, anywhere. He seeks out his enemies. That's why, what does God command us to do to our enemies? Somebody tell me. Love your enemies. 
And you can't reach what you don't touch. So I don't care who's wronged you, who's talked bad smack about you. It really doesn't matter. You need to love, I need to love, like David loved Jonathan and sent someone to find Jonathan's relatives to bring them to the palace. So he was separated from the king, but he was sought by the king. Number three, praise God, he was saved by the king. <laughs> Amen. That's good. You know, <laughs> reading the condition of Meshibotheth like we did, the, the, the toenails and dirty and long beard, never washed his clothes. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Where is that coming from through the speaker? Which guy is saying that? Amen. Oh. Is that you, Brother Cliff? I'll turn it off. No, that's fine. It's 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 like saying sick him to a bulldog. Amen. <laughs> sick him. <laughs> He's saved by the king. I don't know. I got it on. I guess. He was a red. He was dirty. He was destitute. He was poor. Too poor to take care of himself. He had nothing to bring to the king. We have nothing to bring to the king. The Bible says. Nothing in my hands I bring, simply to thy cross I cling. We have nothing worthy. He's worthy. We're unworthy. That's what grace is all about. Grace is getting something you don't deserve. Mercy is getting out of what you deserve. You know what, ladies and gentlemen? We have nothing, nothing to bring to him. Our sins are wretched. The exceeding, exceedingly sinfulness of sin, it's an abomination to God. But God loves us through his open love, his overcoming love. And the condition of this man was he was unlovely. But there's an invitation. I love you. Come. My grace is sufficient for you. And in 2 Samuel 9, 8, just back up there real quickly. We read it, but let's look at it again. Second Samuel 9 and verse number 8. <clears throat> this was kind of a an aha moment. You know, when you're witnessing to somebody and all of a sudden you can see the light bulb, invisible light bulb over their head, and they're like, Ugh, if I don't get saved, I'm going to hell. Pastor Cliff, what I do now when I lead people to the Lord, because I don't want to make them a twofold more child of hell than they are, you got to get say you got to get lost before you can get saved. Um, this mother lost her kid, and she called nine one one. I can't find my kid. I can't find my kid. They sent out the uh, they sent out the sheriff's department, the police department. They sent out the fire truck. Everybody, and they're combing the woods, and they're looking all over. They go in the house, and they're looking and everything, and they can't find him. They go in the basement, and under the stairway was a little closet with a door, and. One guy just decided to open this door under the stairway, and there's the kid playing Game Boy. <laughs> oh, you found! You found! The kid says, I was never lost. I was never lost. you got to get lost before you can get saved. Amen? So, Pastor Cliff, what I'd like to do is before they say they want to get saved, and before they pray to be saved, I say, now, tell me this. If you don't pray to be saved... Where will you go? And if they don't say what? No. Hell, are they lost? No. 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 So he had nothing to bring, but here's what he said. He had the aha moment in 2 Samuel 9, 8. Look at it. And he bowed himself. When you bow, is that in humble adoration? Yeah. Yeah. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord coming up. He bowed himself and he said, what is thy servant? Who am I? Who am I that you love me? Who am I, Lord? Who am I? You're somebody that God loves. You're somebody that God died for. And if you'd have been the only one in the whole world, he still would have died for you. Watch it. What is thy servant? that thou should look upon such a dead dog as I am. That's what he thought of himself. He didn't say, I don't need you. I'm good enough to be saved. i just been on hard times. I can cut my toenails. I can wash my clothes. I can take a bath. 
And I can even trim my beard. None of those things that we try to do ever will gain us merit with God. He said, I'm, I'm nothing. And why do you even love me? We love him, the Bible says, because he first loved us. His confession, his humility, and he had reality. He had reality. He saw himself unworthy of God's love. You know, there's so much entitlement in the world today. I deserve to go to heaven because I'm good. I deserve this. I deserve that. No, if we got what we deserve, where would we be, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. Thank God we don't get what we deserve. Thank God. We come to God with no merit on our own. We come to God because he first loved us and gave himself for us. We come to God because of the invitation. Come, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. The spirit and the bride say, come in revelation. He said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We're saved by grace, God's unmerited favor, through faith, trusting in, believing in, hoping in. We're saved by grace through faith, not of ourselves. Nobody's going to get to heaven and go, I mean it, I mean it, I mean it. Oh, no. We're going to get to heaven. We're going to bow and say, thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. You see, ladies and gentlemen, coming to Christ requires the confession there's an illustration. A lady came to the preacher during an invitation hymn. She said, I want to become a Christian. The preacher said, okay. We'll pray the sinner's prayer. And you pray from your heart and you truly mean it. God promises he'll save you. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And she said, okay. So the preacher proceeded and he said, repeat after me. Dear God, I'm a rotten sinner. And he didn't hear anything from the lady. And he waited and the preacher looked up. She said, I can't pray that. I'm not a rotten sinner. I'm a good sinner. <laughs> and the preacher said, dear lady, there's no good sinners. Either you tell the Lord the truth or go back to your seat. With that, tears came down her face and she prayed and accepted the Lord Jesus as her savior. David accepted Moshebeth's statement and he immediately ordered his servants to care for him. He immediately got all the benefits of being a child of the king. Do you remember what David said? He'll be like one of the king's sons. <laughs> That's why we're children of God by faith. In Jesus Christ. That's why he's our father. We're his child. When we come to him in humble confession, in faith, being saved by grace through faith, he saves us and blesses us and keeps us. He's not a deadbeat dad. He loves us and cares for us. Meshibotheth was now safe from harm. He was eternally secure. He had a home forever. You'll be under my table forever. Not only here on this earth, but in the next to come. You see, the Lord gives grace, but we need to accept it. We need to A, admit that we're a sinner, B, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and C, call and confess Him as our Lord and Savior, realizing there's nothing we can do to merit salvation that it's 100% Him. Realizing that you and I really are the Moshebeths. And we really are in Lodabar. And we're far away from Jerusalem and the kingdom and the castle. But God sent His Son to seek and to save that which was lost. And He said, Come. Come. Today... If you're saved, thank God that you can rescue some Meshibothefs at a Lodabar. That God has sent you, so send I you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me. Today, if you're here, 
and you're not 150% sure that you'd go to heaven if you died today, tomorrow, next week, or next month, you may think you're hot stuff on the iceberg, but you're not. You're not. You're lost and undone, and you need a Savior. But you have to say, swallow your pride. Do I have to say I'm a dumb dog? Well, call yourself like you see yourself. And if you don't see yourself like a lost person, then you can't get saved. Remember the little boy? Well, I wasn't lost. Only two people know if you're saved or not, you and God. And you need to know. Because if you're constantly doubting, that's a bad place to live. Because God can't use you the way He wants to use you till you get it nailed down. And today, if you haven't been telling anybody how they can get out of Lodabar, that, that's cruel and mean. We need to share what God has given us. Amen? So with our heads bowed and our eyes closed today, our heads bowed and our eyes closed, you're here, and you would say, Pastor Hughes, I am saved, but I need to tell some folks how to get out of Lodabar. And God spoke to my heart today. And I'm so glad, I'm so glad that God sent His Son to save my soul. If you can say that with full assurance, would you just lift your hand up today? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you. If you're here today and you'd say, Pastor Hughes, I'm not 150% sure if I died today, tomorrow, next week, or next month, I'd go to heaven. I'm not that sure, but I want to make sure today. Pray for me. You might have to swallow your pride. Don't worry about what anybody else thinks. It's you that must give an account someday, not somebody else. If you're not 150% sure, with our heads bowed and our eyes closed, would you just slip your hand up? I'll pray for you today. Not call your name. Not make a spectacle out of you. Anybody like that? Anyone? Quickly. Just slip it up. Put it right back down. We're going to have... Thank you. God bless you. We're going to have an invitation. And the pianist is going to play. And if you would want to make sure that you're saved, you slip out and come. We'll have a lady pray with a lady, a man with a man. And you can go out of here today saying, Yahoo! I'm rescued from Lodabar. Amen. So with our heads bowed and our eyes closed, as the instruments start to play, you'd like to come. We'll pray with you. Not sure you're saved. You can get saved today. This dear lady right here raised her hand for assurance. Someone else. You need to come get assurance. I'll pray with you. Pastor will pray with you. Don't take it for granted. Would you like to make sure you're saved? Yes. Okay, what's your name? Isren. Isel? Isren. Isren. Okay. Should I have my wife pray no, with her? No. Yeah. Okay. Carol, she she wants to be prayed with too. Yeah, I know. Okay. Okay. Thank you. This is calling, is tenderly calling today. Why don't we all stand?